Welcome to CarePod, a safe place to educate, inspire, and renew the caregiver. Listen in with our host, Dr. Kipley Bell, as she interviews different experts along the caregiving journey. So I'm really excited today. I'm with a friend and I'm with a woman that I really have a lot of respect for. Like, you know, it's so cool in life to have other women that you emulate, that you respect their path. Look, I'm tearing up. Uh, and that you, you know, hope to be when you grow up. So I love it. I love it. So I'm here with my friend, Jean Brooks. And uh, Jean is just this multifaceted woman. And um, she is what we term the older adult active person, right? And yes. I I really wanted to sit with her and I think it's important. Listen, I'm going to be 50 in September. How about that? About that. And I just wanted to <laughs> sit, sit. I like to sit with women that have kind of done the things and like, what would you say to women my age now? And like, here we are caregiving our parents, but yet, you know, what are the things that you would put into place to those kind of uh, in this in this stage and age at, at this time, it's kind of it's a scary place in a way. Like you know, we're not celebrating as many birthdays and weddings. You know, we're doing the funerals of parents and the things. So yeah, so I'm gonna stop talking. I want to introduce my CarePod audience to Ms. Jean Brooks. Welcome to the CarePod. Oh, thank you so much, Kipley. I when you were describing it, I'm thinking, who is this person? I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really an honor to be here. And when you asked me to do this, I said, well, you know, I know this is about caregiving, and I am not a caregiver. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, I've never had to be a caregiver because both of my parents died very suddenly in you know, uh, and did not need care in that latter stage of their life. And um, I don't have a caregiver. Fortunately, I don't need one yet. But and I hope I never do. But it's um, when I when you said, what would I say to people at your stage of life? I, there's a there's a few things that you have to remember, I think, particularly since you are a caregiver, is that you have a life outside of that, which I know you do, but I have friends who are caregivers and it seems that that's all they do. And I don't know if there's a way around that. I'm thinking back to a time when I was talking to a friend. I said, Judy, gonna, you've been teaching for 30 years. Why haven't you retired yet? And she said, I'm afraid to retire because I don't know what to do with my time. And to me, that just went off like a red light about, I thought, how could you not think about what you were going to do when you retire? And I don't know if you can translate that over to caregiving, but I think if you plan far enough in advance to have something that is just yours, this is what I do. This is me. And even though you're a caregiver and it could be a full-time caregiver, you still need to get out and do what it is that is yours with as little time as you may have. But I think the most important part is to take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself or else you're never going to be good for anybody else. That's it. Well, you know, to when you, when I asked you and that was your response, I, you know, it was a, it's a curious point for me because <laughs> it's, it's also how we redefine what age looks like. And I think that's yeah. what excites me when I think of Jean Brooks, because it is, here's someone who says, you know what, Jean, for our audience purposes, has coined the term retire to life, like yes, retire to the life and the way in which you hope and would like to design that chapter of your life to be. Absolutely. And so- when when did that decision making that thought process begin for you? Actually, it was after that conversation with my friend, and she literally was, and you know, she since has retired, but she worked probably four or five years longer than she wanted to, 
because she didn't know what to do. And that's when I started working on a program to help people like her. I mean, the most important thing people have to remember is you don't retire from something. You have to retire to something. Mm. And if you start planning soon enough, you can have that. And even, and it's people your age that need to start planning. It's not people my age, you know, our, our right. window has been in the chat, you know, we're there. <laughs> if, you, if you start soon enough in your life looking at, you know, what do I want my retirement to look like? And it's even, well, it's more difficult when you have a spouse. I will be quite honest with you. Uh, as many people as I've met that the husband and the wife or the, the two partners had no idea that the other person didn't all automatically agree with what they wanted to do when they were retired. You know, the husband may have thought, well, when I retire, you know, I'm going to go fishing and play golf. And the, and the other partner may have said, well, when I retire, you know, I really want to travel. I, I really don't want to stay around here. And I, maybe I want to live someplace else. Maybe I want, so there are so many decision processes that you have to go through and you have to be honest with each other or else it's never going to work. It it just you know that's yeah. it. You and it's and I think it. that's 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 th those are important points. I think you know, like I'm looking at my cohort of friends and I'm saying, listen, and the decisions we make now in this decade will determine yeah. how our subsequent decades would look. And that that means our food choices, our mobility, our exercise, all the things, right? That's right. So, yes, particularly your health. If you don't have good health, you're never going to enjoy your retirement, period. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it. And your purpose, you yeah. know, like yeah. I found, I, I have had patients that they literally can say, I have, you know, whatever it is, 482 days and 62 hours left to retirement <laughs> day. Yeah. And yeah. then their, their lifestyle goes because yep. they have no purpose. They've gone from a purpose-filled job to no plan. Yes, like stepping off a cliff. And that's why, unless you make a plan, it you know, you're gonna have about six months of coasting of God, oh God, I can finally clean my closets. Oh, you know, I can do this, I can do all these things I've been putting off. And then what? You know, there has to be a reason to get out of bed every morning for the next 20 to 30 years. And that's not going to be to clean your closets or to weed the garden. It's it has to go so far beyond that so far. Yeah. So tell me about your earlier work life. Tell our tell our oh. audience about your multifaceted self. And then I want to share with everyone about your your specific program, Retire to Life. Okay. My work life. I spent the good part of my 30s and early 40s being a housewife. That's what we did back in those days. I raised my three sons and uh, knew I was going to get a divorce. And so I went back to college and finished my college degree, a full-time 30 three five-year-old student among all those 18-year-old freshmen but you know I did it good for you went to, work, went to work in the banking industry uh and spent the next 30 years as a banker in various aspects of of banking commercial banking uh everything and once that career was I was getting ready to retire and my job disappeared. It was back when all the banks were, you know, doing all these kinds of things, reorganizing and buying each other out. And, and my job disappeared. And that's when I started working on retire to life. But in the meantime, I, while I was working on it, I also, my passion is acting always has been performance work. And I was fortunate enough to, uh, find quite a bit of work in that field that kept me busy while I was working on retire to life. So that's what I did. I love it. And see, you know, I'm telling you now we are looking at a whole surge of older adult persons. So your likeness is going to be needed in the industry uh, for various ads and all the things, voiceovers, you name it. So I hope you're still, uh, 
uh, oh, yeah. keeping your toe in it. <laughs> oh, very much, very much. Yes, probably Beautiful. the most. Yeah, the most interesting work I did through all of that time was being a standardized patient in a medical, you know, at uh, at the medical hospital schools and teaching medical students how to communicate with their patients. That, that was our basic job. And that was really, really rewarding. Yes, that's such fulfilling work. So for, for those of you who don't know, the standardized patient is, you know, given a vignette, if you will, a certain type of circumstance that uh, like uh, they're presenting with abdominal pain or a headache or whatever the case may be. And the medical student is trained how to assess that particular complaint and have bedside and interactions and learning about the appropriate questions. So, so important to medical education and me medical educators out there. So huge, huge role you played in that, in that regard. Are you a busy professional caregiver? Stressed? Worried? Thinking about how you're going to manage all the activities of daily living? plus care gift for your aging loved one? What to do? Soccer practice, wash the clothes, eggs, milk, bread, pasta. <gasps> Enter in Care Cab. Care Cab to the rescue. Our Care Cab support staff will do that heavy lifting for you. Check us out. Care Cab at impactfulcaregiving.com. Um, yeah. So tell me about, so you were thinking about this kind of later chapter, you're around my age, maybe younger thinking about, okay, yeah. what do I want retirement to look like? And yeah. so you created this program. Tell our li listeners uh, about it. The uh, Retire to Life was a, it looked at all of the non-financial aspects of retirement. You can get enough financial advice out there as to what you should do with your money and how you're going to make it last your retirement. I wanted people to look at the non-financial aspects. Um, and what I took, I created 10 different exercises and ended up with a, a sort of a plan for people going forward. The exercises were everything from what do you like about your current job? What don't you like? Is there anything about your job that you would want to carry into retirement. Maybe you are a mentor at your workplace. Maybe you would love to mentor someone when you retire. So we can look at that. Um, if there are things that, what, where do you wanna live? That depends on what kind of activities you want to do. Some people automatically assume that they're going to go to Florida, not gonna work for everybody. You know, it depends upon if you're going to talk to your spouse or your partner about that, or if you're going to make up this on your own, it's really so much more than just, um, you know, what do you, what, you know, uh, let me see here. Okay, these are some of the questions we ask. Do you want to purchase? Do you want to rent? Are you in one location or do you want more than one location? The single family house, a condominium, a motor home, a golf community, assisted living, a number of bedrooms, separate bedrooms for each one of you, gourmet kitchen, swimming. Yeah, there's so many things you have to mm. say, okay, this is what I really want. And then when you find out that's not what somebody else wanted, that's when you have to start negotiating. Sometimes during this whole process, I always wanted it to be a face-to-face -face seminar arrangement so that people could sit in smaller groups then. And one of the fun um, steps that I took them through was, you know, you simply, when you leave your job, you sort of disappear. You don't know who you are. How do you describe yourself? You know, it used to be, you know, here's Kipley, you know, uh, mm -hmm. she's a doctor and she runs this and she does that and she does that. But when you retire, it's like nobody knows anything else about you except your work story. So I suggested people make up their new business cards that said something like, well, I'm a connoisseur of life. You know, Jane Brooks, connoisseur of life, or I'm a maven of movies. 
whatever. So when people Love say, that. what do you do? You can hand them your business card with your contact information on it, like you did for so many years. You know, I think that's really, uh, and another group exercise that I would take people through was uh, doing random acts of kindness. Just thinking of small little things you could do, maybe not on a daily basis, but you know, it's one, one of the things that I used to love doing was going to the library and going to the children's section and putting a dollar bill in a book. I love that. So some kid comes to the library, picks up this book and a dollar bill falls out. I mean, you know, it's just a small thing, but it's amazing how good that can make you feel, you know, putting a quarter in a parking meter. Yeah, it's it's really um, something that you can work into your life that gives you meaning, you know. Another thing I had people do was to literally write out their life story. I had two pages of questions as sort of a guide. But it's amazing when you look back over your life at the things that you maybe have enjoyed and then totally forgot about that you could bring back in your, you know, I had one gentleman who used to draw cartoons for his junior high school newsletter. He said, I had totally forgotten about how much I really enjoyed that. So he started sketching again. I have a friend who went to an art meeting with another friend, simply because Sue went with Kathy because Kathy was afraid to go on her own. Sue ended up being the most magnificent watercolor artist I have ever met. And she didn't start this till she was almost 70. So- oh, Wow, uh, love yeah, it. Yes, lots of stories like that. So when, when you put this all together, I'm, there's one more thing, it's very important. Your connections. When you leave your job, those connections dry up. They all, everybody's going to say, oh, yes, you know, we'll see each other. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So seldom happens. I'm very fortunate. I have a group of four from when I left my last bank and we still get together. And that's been over 10 years ago. But so many of the other people that I knew from then that I really enjoyed, but they disappear. So you have to work out a way to find your next community, your next group. Mm. I just moved where I'm living now. I'm still looking for those people, but I will find them. I know I'll find them. I love that. I love that. It's like find your tribe. And you yes, know, there absolutely. Is, it's how we eliminate isolation, right? Like I, yes. oh, I even yes. feel that I even feel that from college friends that I, you know, literally 20 years of friendship, but we all are spread out over the country. Right. And so, you know, my core group, I miss, you know, hanging out in the nail salon and laughing until your belly aches, you know, yes. so I yes. get that. So as, as an older adult person, that, that even becomes even more important to your, your sense yes. of community. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, there's really, um, like I said, so much to think about. You have to have a purpose to put your feet on the floor every morning when you get out of bed. And if you don't, life will be very slow and very short. If you're mm -hmm. not, it, your mental attitude so affects the quality of your health. It really does. And unless you like what you're doing and where you are, um, you're going to cut your life short. You really mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. So who is Jean 10 years from now? Okay. 10. Oh my God. Kipley, 10 years from now, I'll be 88. <laughs> I don't know. That's awesome. You sure will. You sure will. 10 years sure from will. now, I hope that I am still able to drive out to the Midwest to see my family, because I do that. In fact, I'm gonna be doing that uh, in June. Uh, I will drive out to see my uh, my grandchildren's 17th birthday. And wow. yeah, twins, and then back into Nebraska for my 60th high school reunion. Love it. And uh, drive up to Minnesota to reconnect with friends that I made when I lived in North Dakota. So yeah, I still wanna be able to do that. I am uh, starting to work on uh, putting together cabarets, you know, singing for people, Love telling it. stories. So I hope I can continue doing that. 
at that age, the acting opportunities are going to be few and far between, you know, but I think doing the cabarets and working with, uh, you know, probably at that point, it'll be senior institutions that, you know, you just go in and sing all the old songs that people love, you know, so that's, uh, that's what I see myself doing. I love that's it. it. <laughs> so what's, what's your favorite song? Oh my gosh. You know what? I don't, I can't do that. I love music. I can't do a favorite song, but my very first cabaret that I did, I opened with the song Running Wild, which that's from the Great American Songbook. And because it's, you know, says, I, you know, I, I don't care anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it my way and I'm not going to depend on anybody else. And it's running wild, lost control, mighty bold, feeling gay, reckless too, carefree life all the time, nothing's blue. And I, and I love that song. It's an upbeat it. song. And yeah, yeah. And you're yes. writing your narrative. You're you're living, you are retiring to yes. life. Beautiful. Yes. yes. Beautiful. Yes, so you know I'm going to rope you in. Like we're gonna talk <laughs> offline on how we take retire to life on the road. Cause I, I just okay. think it is it is necessary. It is it is necessary. I say yeah. to so many people, I'm not anti a lot of things, but I'm anti retirement. Like yes. Yes. I, I have really seen so many so many people over my career just decline tremendously because yes. of the lack of purpose and plan. And it's just, yes. it's, yeah. So, yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm so thankful you joined me today. Any last, uh, you know, words for our audience? Uh, plan. Plan and you'll be happier and maintain your health or else you won't enjoy any of those plans. Awesome. Well, I'm so thankful. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for asking me, Kipley. It's been a blast. Beautiful. Great information right from the source. For more information on how to caregive like a boss, check out impactfulcaregiving.com. Want to be a guest on the show? Contact us at carepod at impactfulcaregiving.com.